It's very nice to meet you guys. a song. I want you to think of a song that stays with you. Maybe it got you through some of the rough times in your life. Or maybe it reminds you of the good times. You got it? Good. Now imagine that song contained the very information you needed to make sure that your children could put food on the table. Imagine that song contained the information you needed to make sure there was enough soil in the ground or fish in the river for your grandchildren. Imagine that very song you've had stuck in your head for all those years spelled survival for you and your family or maybe the survival of another species. So Oliver Sacks, the acclaimed neurologist and the author of the bestseller, Musicophilia, says that humans are a musical species no less than a linguistic one. He says that all of us, with very few exceptions, can perceive music. Things like tones, timbre, pitch intervals, Melodic contours, harmony, and maybe most elementally, rhythm. We integrate all of these in our mind using multiple parts of the brain simultaneously. And in a metaphorical sense, we're also simultaneously constructing this music in our hearts. You guys ever get a song stuck in your head? Oliver says that this is due to the extraordinary tenacity of the musical memory. He says that all of us, even relatively non-musical people, tend to be able to recall music, not only just the general tone or feeling of the song, but even the pitch and the tempo. And given this tenacity of musical memory, that the messages you hear through music and your youth might stay with you for the rest of your life. He says that our auditory systems and our nervous systems are exquisitely tuned for music.
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> the influential power of music on the mind has been recognized for millennia. The highest goal of music is to connect one's soul to the divine nature, not entertainment. Music gives a soul to the universe. When the soul hears music, it drops its best guard. And when one hears music imbued with a certain passion, he becomes imbued with the same passion. That's important, remember that one. Now a few years later, the Beatles talked about a revolution. Said we all wanted to change the world. Would you agree? Well, from the protest music of the 1960s, to the work in the 1980s of Paul Simon, Hugh Masekela, Miriam Makeba, Ladysmith Black Mombasa, and all the rest, to the singing revolution in Estonia, the past century has been marked by significant events that were harnessing the power of music to create positive change. Now my question is, can we create an ongoing movement using music to confront the environmental issues that we face today with such global implications? In other words, can we make music for sustainability sustainable? Now, a lot of people have found success in this world by solving the world's challenges. And a lot of these challenges are in spheres such as health and technology, energy, governance, you know, important things. But positive change is the child of challenges. And I want to highlight today the importance of the creative sphere in solving all of these global challenges. You see, every time we paint a painting, or we sing a new song, or write a story, creatives challenge ourselves to express the intangible deeply and uniquely in our, our own way. Every time we write a poem, or start to compose or sketch, we, um, every time we write a poem, start to compose or sketch, um, we're seeking resolutions. We're seeking resolutions to harmony, rhythm, and form and fluid genesis creating something altogether new. Now I believe that when this, the creative sphere applies this natural inclination to solving problems that we place before ourselves in our creative work, to solving some of the problems that are being faced by humanity and the globe as a whole, the creative sphere stands to bring great strides of positive change to the world as it has many times in the past. After all, as they say, novel problems beg novel solutions. So back to the picture, the big picture. We've got health and technology, music and energy, um, justice and painting, governance and filmmaking, photography, food, food writing, writing, you know, you get the gist. Um, now, I believe that each of these different spheres is uniquely able to bring positive change to the world in a way that the others can't quite replicate. So let me give you a few examples. The journalistic sphere is good at keeping us informed of current events or digging out truths and exposing them. Or the scientific sphere is good at chasing down and understanding deep nuances of how the world really works. The musical sphere is generally good at translating words to emotions or vice versa and presenting the results in a way that you never forget. And the business world is good at making money. I know I'm not. But I'm glad that we live in a world in which philanthropy and corporate social responsibility are becoming more important to more people. Now the ideal is that all of these various spheres can check and balance one another, but on top of that, amplify the positive effects that the others have on this world. Unfortunately, that's still not how things are going. By living the way that we do, our world and our species are falling apart. So the good news is, all of these spheres and these careers that I'm talking about can be boiled down to individuals. And that's where things get fun, because most of the individuals I know aren't spheres. And in the context of this metaphor, we're a lot more like three-dimensional Venn diagrams, right? And that little overlap right in the middle, that's where you find who you are and how you can bring positive change to the rest of the world in ways that other individuals can't replicate. Or maybe they can, but they just aren't doing it yet. Or maybe they are, in which case you form a team that can do even bigger and better things. On a personal level, through reflection and experimentation, we can find out what our hometowns and our family life, our passions and our preferences, 
Our victories and our failures have been leading us up to all along to be a person unlike anyone else with a unique capacity to uplift the world and the people around us in unique individual ways. And now I'm here to tell you that this is not just an ability you have. I believe it is a responsibility. Years of lifestyles based on selfishness, fear, and apathy have left our world a wreck. And there are people who are actively making it worse. So it rests on all of our shoulders to reflect, find what inner vocation of ours can bring a greater good to the outer world, and start spending at least part of our lives being part of the greater good. Now, we humans crave connection, but unfortunately, we're also incredibly awkward. Uh, so sometimes it helps to have a common goal or a common enemy, something that affects all of us. And in our day and age, if there are one common enemy, one global issue that could make us or break us, unite us or divide us, it would have to be climate change. Thomas Stocker, the co-chair of the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, has said that this is the greatest challenge of our time. 97% of climate scientists agree this is happening and we're doing it. We're already seeing coastal erosion, lowland flooding, uh, the disappearance of island nations, and record-breaking natural disasters, the likes of which have been forecast by climate scientists for decades to death years. The time is now, everyone, for each and every one of us to find our little piece of the puzzle of becoming that broader solution. Last year, 2016, was the third consecutive hottest year on record, each year hotter than the next. And it's not stopping. We have to remember that no environmental issue is exclusive of humanity, especially climate change. And the people who are affected the most are the people who are contributing the least, living vulnerably on the edge in the developing world. Our brothers and sisters are already suffering all of the effects that I've listed so far, and many more. It's time that each of us pick up the torch and start to take some responsibility for our actions to uplift our brothers and sisters and leave behind a better world for our children and our grandchildren. Unfortunately, we cannot rely on the people in power to make these decisions for us. We all share the responsibility. We all share the responsibility. It's game time, everybody. How are you gonna find your way to be part of the solution? And it will require efforts from all of the spheres of humanity, all of those politicians, all of those journalists, even musicians. All of, us, all of us have something to chip in. Yes, even us musicians. So in 2015, I started making conservation music. And basically what we're trying to do with this is to supplement the traditional top-down approaches to environmental outreach in the developing world. We're trying to create a relatable, memorable, and actionable way to get these points across to the people who need it the most. By collaborating with musicians in developing countries and local languages and local musical styles, broadcasting those songs over the radio for thousands to hear. We create inspiring media, reaching thousands of people over the radio, thousands more over the television, and thousands more over the internet. The advent of cheap smartphones all over the southern part of Africa where this journey has begun has made shareable music videos more accessible as well. So we get people tapping their feet to the idea that no matter what your situation might be, no matter how rich or how poor, no matter where you live, you can be part of this. This all started back in 2015. I had just hopped off a canoe with the Okavango Wilderness Project with National Geographic and moved into the small village of Saranga on the edge of the Okavango Delta. There I started meeting with musicians, discussing some of the issues that they were facing with regards to their relationship with their natural environment. And then we would talk about this unique power that music has to leave a lasting imprint on the mind and the heart. And then we would start to write music. Before long, I found myself back in Lesotho, the mountain kingdom in Southern Africa, where I bought a motorbike and continued the work. After that, I was cruising all over Southern Africa, meeting musicians everywhere I went, creating new music about relevant issues in each area from desertification to the burning of the fields 
to littering, to erosion, whatever it might be. We sang these songs in local styles and local languages. Empowering these musicians to be the spokespeople for positive change while I stayed in the background. So, so far we're working in Lesotho, Botswana, Angola, Zambia, um, South Africa, Swaziland, and Namibia. This year we hope to get into Kenya and Tanzania, Mozambique, and Zimbabwe, but we're very careful not to take the hit and run approach. We want to create a lasting movement. We want to be able to enable all of the creatives we meet along the way, both old and young, in each of these countries to take up the torch and continue this important work using music to create a better world. And the first official production that we did with conservation music was called Ngope La Musi. This was back in Lesotho. And it told the story of a man named Fanuel Musi, who was on his way to the capital city of Maseru from his village of Modialia when he came across he came across a massive torrent of muddy water cutting through his garden. So he turned back and went home. The rains ended, the soil dried. Fanuel Musi fastened his leather apron around his waist and started carrying stones one at a time to fill this massive erosion belly that had destroyed his land. Slowly but surely, he rallied his family and his friends and then eventually even foreign tourists who came in and together they patched this gully. And not only that, but where once there was a wasteland, there is now a forest for firewood and peach trees for food. There's a well to bring water to the family and there's even a reed bed growing there to use in thatching of the roots. It's an incredibly inspiring story. And we created a song. And the opening line is, which in Sasutu means, if you want to see beautiful things, take a mirror and look within. I didn't write that. If you want to see beautiful things, take a mirror and look within. No matter what your situation might be, if you take a moment to look within, find that overlap of your passions and your experiences and your skills, you will find a way to bring beautiful things to this world that really needs it. Every single one of us in this room has that power. So it all boils down to two questions. What are you good at and what do you care about? Now, if you're not good at anything yet, keep practicing. I can tell you that from playing guitar. But once you know, what are you good at and what do you care about? Try putting them together. They might be as divergent as music and the environment. But just try and pursue that path, making decisions based on love and not fear, with an open heart, surrounding yourself with motivated people and filling them with gratitude at every possible turn. I promise you, you will find your way. What are you good at and what do you care about? Now go put the two together and start changing the world. Thank you very much.